Okay, we're now recording. So now I'm going to share my screen. So welcome to a UNCG Libraries Research and Application Webinar on ULTRA, the University Libraries Tutorials for Research Assistance. My name is Sam Parlow. My pronouns are she, hers. I am the online learning librarian for research instruction and outreach, which means I help manage our online learning objects about research. Um, I'm also a liaison librarian, so I do work with the departments of community and therapeutic recreation, kinesiology, public health education, human development, family studies, and specialized education. So I come out and teach. Um, I create some of these tutorials. I help manage these tutorials um, and so on and so on. So if you have any questions about that stuff, let me know. Um, and today we're going to be talking about ULTRA. So I just wanted to ask a couple of questions. Um, so let me get out of this. And now I'm going to copy this. And now I'm going to put chat. Where's my chat? Now I got to stop sharing. <laughs> and throw this in chat. And so if you could just take a second, I know there's just three of you to take these polls, but I thought this would still be easier than, um, you know, having everyone put it in the chat. But this is just asking if you've used our um, library research tutorials before and if you have um, some questions about them. Um, and now I will go back to the poll because um, I think I can also do a QR code. Present. So maybe now it should work. I activated it. This is a new uh, platform for me. There's a QR code too that you can use. Been using this in my teaching, so like I'm not as used to using it in the webinar format. So okay, someone hasn't used them. Um, Someone else said not yet. Okay. And if you want to put in chat, like, you know, what kind of tutorials do you think you would need as either a student or an employee or a faculty member for class? Um, and then, yeah, someone said that they're a creator of one and I'm working on more. Yeah. I think I know who that is. So great. Thank you. Um, and again, feel free to put it in chat. And this is reminding me because I haven't done a webinar on Teams in a little bit. I'm going to put chat up in my phone so I can see what's going on while I'm presenting. Okay, so I'm going to go over a quick history of Ultra since it seems like a couple of y'all have not um, seen Ultra yet and what it is and how it came to be. So Ultra again stands for University Libraries Tutorials for Research Assistance. We used to have a system called PATH, which honestly I don't remember what that stands for, but it was a set group of 10 tutorials and the way it worked in terms of how a certificate was made and that there were like questions at the end of it is that there was no room for adding more modules. So as things came up that people were asking us about, we were like, we can't add anything to it. We're going to have to just make kind of patchwork things in, and that got to be cumbersome. So we decided to make a new platform that would be modular and have room for additions, edits, right? We know that interfaces change um, and so on. So we wanted to connect these research tutorials about a variety of research topics to our um, information and literacy student learning objectives for research outreach and instruction. So here they are. Um, so our group is the ones that does the teaching in terms of information literacy. So um, we have made these categories or Jenny Dale and Maggie Murphy, two people in our department have made um, these categories of find, evaluate, use, credit, create. And then we have the objective of here. So for example, the goal or objective and find is that students will feel empowered to locate, access, and select information sources appropriate to their information need. And then we have different um, levels, right, of the outcomes. So for first year general education, disciplinary major level outcomes, so like junior, seniors, and then graduate level 
I, you know, outcome. So for example, if you're a graduate student and you're, you know, trying to use our tutorials under find, we want students to be able to demonstrate expertise in using discipline specific databases and resources. So this is, um, again, interesting. So definitely check it out um, when you get a chance. Remember that these slides are in chat. Um, so um, due to server space issues and um, different things, we had to, we had a homegrown situation uh, with Ultra. We had created it on our own website and we had created interactions and we were using an open source platform for interactions called H5P. Uh, that was working great, but due to server space, we had to move it to a new website. And we determined that it would be easier to kind of do our own website that we could edit more frequently. So we moved it to um, something called LibWizard, which is a vendor uh, for library tutorials. So it makes forms, um, it has assessments and things like that, but it's really a um, big thing that it does is these interactive tutorials. So we thought this would give us, you know, more control um, and more sustainability in how we did it. So. Um, there's always been these certain things as a part of our tutorials, and if you haven't used them before, then this is new to you. Uh, but we've always had quick checks, and then at the end, we've had quizzes that range from two to five questions that produce a certificate. So it used to be that we produce a certific certificate for a tutorial. So we had a group of modules that would comprise a tutorial, and you had to take both modules to produce a certificate. All of these were also available as modules in Canvas Commons with the quizzes. And then um, all of it was the same content within Canvas Commons and the website. Um, but in the new to Ultra, we still have certificates, but now instead of a group of modules, producing a certificate like plagiarism and citation would produce a certificate. Each module produces a certificate. So now instructors have more uh, autonomy in terms of how they can produce certificates if they're having the students go through a website. Um, and same with the uh, Canvas Commons. You can edit within Canvas Commons and, produ and produce a quiz grade or, you know, non-graded, you know, uh, extra credit, whatever you want to do within your Canvas course. So in the first um, round of Ultra, you did have to log in with a UNCG username and password to produce a certificate. On this new platform, there is no UNCG login. Uh, the certificate, uh, the quiz at the end of the module that produces the certificate has, you input the name, your name or the user's name, and then uh, you have to answer the five quiz questions, two to five quiz questions, and then it will produce a certificate with your name on it and what module you finished with your grade. Uh, you can retake the modules in order to get a better grade. And then with the certificate, you can download a PDF of it or email yourself or a teacher the certificate. Um, so again, like I said, now the certificate gives a grade. It used to just give you like a, you have completed this module uh, with the login, um, but now it gives you a grade. So on the quick checks, uh, these are like interactions throughout the tutorial to kind of gauge your learning. There used to be at the bottom run through something called H5P, which is an open source uh, HTML5 question creator that we were using for that. Those questions are still in Canvas. Uh, we don't collect that data, but now they're on the left through LibWizard um, with something that uh, is through LibWizard. You have to answer them correct to move forward, but they are not graded and they don't go towards the quiz at the end. Uh, they're just to gauge that you're learning the material. And you can, of course, answer them over and over and over again. And as we migrated this to a new platform, we have updated all the links. There's no broken links and um, we have a new library website. So all the new interfaces are in there. Um, so we do ask that if you have ever downloaded them through Canvas Commons, that you definitely re-download them this semester uh, since they are different in terms of links being fixed, interfaces being updated, uh, content being updated as need be. And we are using Microsoft Forms now to gauge our assessment at the end. Uh, so again, re-downloading them in Canvas Commons is the best bet. So the big thing before we go into a tour of the new platform that I want to emphasize is that we do have liaison librarians. So as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm a liaison to multiple departments, but no matter what department you're with, you have a liaison librarian to help. Um, and so saying that, here they are, and you can click on them here. 
but if you don't know who your liaison librarian is, this is a great chance to get to know them, to send them an email, say hello. And then um, they also know about Ultra, so they could recommend which ones to use for your class based on your student learning objectives and whether it might work better in Canvas or through the website that we're about to go through. Okay, so let me check my chat um, on my phone. Uh, are there any questions before I go into a tour of Ultra? And remember, um, both the slides and um, the uh, Ultra, right, are linked in the um, chat. So the link to this page that I'm on right now is below the PowerPoint slides if you want to follow along with me. Okay. So um, this is Ultra, University Libraries for Tutorials Assistance. And you can see here that we have an about, which I already talked about, and a link to our student learning outcomes, as well as a quick description over here of our learning goals, what find, evaluate, use, credit, create. So we give you a description of how to take Ultra, which I went over and I'm about to tour. And we also have a quick video um, of a navigation video of Ultra, as well as how to get them from Canvas Commons. Um, this page here is a textual, um, a guide of how to also download them from Canvas Commons. And you're also welcome to contact your academic technology specialist, ATS, for your unit um, or your li library liaison to help with these tutorials. Um, there is a feedback form if you want to let us know about any of the tutorials that you take. Uh, it is uh, does have an option to pick whether you took them through our website, which is where we're on right now, um, if you took them for a class. Um, which module you did. So every module should be on here. And then um, did you take the module in Canvas or the library website? And then, you know, just a quick scale of if it met our needs or sharing feedback about the module. That so just helps us make sure we're, we're doing our best with these uh, modules. Okay, so I'm just going to pick a random one. Um, I'm going to pick library databases. This is one we use a lot to teach students or users about library databases at UNCG. So if you click on one, it's going to take you out into a new tab. And then you can see here, this is the platform of the actual tutorial. Um, you can go back to our help page that goes um, into detail about what these are and how to take them, uh, or you can just click begin to get started. So the content is over here on the right, um, and it might link out to like more information that will open up in a new tab for you to kind of see um, different links, visuals, PDFs, maybe websites about more information, um, as well as videos embedded within the page, typical tutorials platform stuff. So this is the quick checks I was talking about where we ask you questions throughout of it, throughout the module. Again, you do need to take these just to gauge um, whether or not you're paying attention, uh, but it doesn't matter whether you get them wrong or right. You will have to get them right in order to move forward, but you can do it as many times as you want. So here it's asking library databases can help narrow down your searching better than Google. That is true. And if you get it right, it says great job. And then you can move to the next slide. Um, again, it can link out, it can have screenshots, you can use a library database off campus, you can, next slide, and then so on and so on. So this should start looking pretty familiar. Ideally, you or your students are reading it in more detail than I am. You're checking out the links to more information to learn more, you're watching the videos, um, so on and so on. So check all that apply. UNC library databases are more helpful than Google and Google Scholar because they can add you to full text, filters, scholarly paper. I think I got it. Yes. Um, so every uh, here again, more pictures, more videos. Every library database is the same. I'm going to say um, true just to show you what it looks like if you get it wrong. Um, it says that's incorrect. Please try again. Um, so you can just say false and move on. We don't ask really super complicated questions. We just want to gauge that you're kind of paying attention. And then here is where we're going to produce our quiz. So I'm going to input my name, and then I'm going to finish the sentence, library databases. They don't help us find books. Help you find scholarly materials. UNCG Libraries Research Guides by Subjects link you to databases relevant to your major or course. True. You should use library databases to You can access UNCG Libraries database from. 
I'm going to answer one wrong. Um, so all of these are correct. Um, but I'm going to answer one wrong to see that you do get a grade and then where you can retake it. If you cannot find out what you are looking for in a library database, you should give up. Um, ask your librarian or chat UNCG. So I got one wrong. So you can see here, my grade is 80. Um, you or your students can tell us what you think through that survey I showed you before. Notice that my certificate of completion has my name, uh, which module I completed, my grade, et cetera. So if you wanna take this again, um, you can retake this tutorial here and it will push you back to the beginning where you could retake the quiz to get a 100. If you don't get a 100, you can also then email yourself, print, and then get a PDF of the certificate for later. So that is how Ultra works. Um, each one of these have the same platform. I'm not gonna make you all go through another one with me, but just to show you that they all look the same at the beginning, and then they all have this like content over here, but the content will be different based on what you are in. They all end in a quiz that um, range from two to five questions. So are there any questions about that? I just opened up my chat again. So the last thing I'm going to show you is that all of these modules are also available in Canvas Commons. So here you can go to Canvas Commons and this is Canvas, right, for UNCG. This should look familiar if you teach within Canvas or you're a student. Uh, but to access them through Canvas Commons, this is for teachers uh, to download modules within your course and then you can edit them to be what you want. Um, and also, we do ask that you re-download them every semester, right, because if a link breaks or we update them, um, we're going to put them in each semester, you know, fix them as we go. They do not link to the original, right, so any edits we make on our end, you'll have to re-download them each semester. So that is my note about using Canvas Commons. So to see all the ones that are available, um, again, everyone on the website is available here. If you don't find one, please let me know. Um, but if I just type in UNCG libraries, you can see here every single one we have. So all the same ones, gray literature, plagiarism, finding images, keyword creation, Chicago, open access are all here. Sometimes liaisons will make ones that are specific to a class or a department. Uh, so definitely check that out or talk to your liaison librarian about what they might have available in Canvas Commons. Uh, but you can see here, we tried to keep all the Ultra ones with the UNCG logo. Um, this one right here has the Ultra logo. It's like, I think one of the first ones we down uploaded, um, but it is also Ultra as well. Um, so if you wanted one, you would just click on the one you want. Um, it will preview the pages that you want. And then you'll click import download and then you'll pick the course that you want to put it in. It comes in unpublished and then you can go yourself and publish it. Um, again, if you need any help with this, you're welcome to contact your ATS um, or your liaison librarian who, again, depending on the liaison librarian, might get your ATS academic technology specialist involved. So that is the main stuff about Ultra. And it sounds like, again, most of y'all um, haven't used the old ultra, so I don't feel like I have to go too deep into the old ultra, but um, that's it. So do y'all have any questions, concerns, things you would like to see in ultra? Because we're always taking feedback um, on uh, different, on things to add or things to think about. Um, I started with the new platform saying stuff that's coming. So we just added Beam evaluation this morning and I'm uploading it to Canvas Commons today. Um, and then um, we have a science primary sources coming, primary sources within the sciences coming soon. So Anna asked, have you all gotten helpful feedback about tutorials to create or changes to implement? Yeah, so actually that form uh, used to be in a Google form, um, but uh, because we link the way we link it in Canvas, we kind of link it before the quiz to try to get people to feed it back, uh, give it back to us. We, when we had it in Google, we had around 8,600 responses from students taking these modules in Canvas. 
Um, and that's a lot uh, of data to go through, which is really great uh, to get all that feedback. And there is a form of like, you know, do you have any issues with that? So that's sometimes how we would find out that a link was broken um, or that like a quiz, you know, maybe had a question that like was annoying a lot of students, which we definitely don't want. Um, you know, so on and so on. So we did get useful feedback that way. Typically in that form, because it's students taking them in a class, they're not saying like, oh, we want one on this. Um, sometimes we will have a faculty member like bring something to our attention. So, or a liaison says, I've been like teaching this over and over again. So for example, we came up with a newspaper one that actually I'm updating with our new library interface um, because we were getting a lot of questions about newspapers. Um, we do have a decision tree, if this is interesting to anyone, um, of like, should we just make a regular tutorial, like a video, a quick video about something, or should we make an ultra module? And the decision tree is really just about, um, ultra is about research concepts, not just like one um, tool in research. So we don't usually do a um, ultra module on like one database or something like that. We do it on like something like all library databases, citations, uh, things like that. So we have gotten feedback through the forum. Um, we have gotten feedback just like working with faculty. Um, our, it's a collaborative system. So, um, you know, Lee, I'm not the only one making them. Liaisons make them. We also work with the UNCG Library and Information Science Department. So a lot of times um, for their practicums or capstones, we'll ask them to, you know, look at the suite and see if there's anything missing. And then they'll come up with ideas to make one. Um, so, for example, all of the humanities primary sources one was done by an LIS student who was interested in working in archives and uh, teaching and instructions. So, like, she did all of those. We have a great literature one, again, done by an LIS capstone student. Um, and there's way more, but those are just the ones I can think of off the top of my head. So what do you think makes a particularly successful, interesting, useful, good tutorial? Yeah, um, I think shorter is better. Um, so I don't think like making really long ones are as successful. But if you're doing something like scholarly communications, uh, a long one is OK because that is for a more advanced audience. If you're making one for undergraduates, we have found, again, the shorter, the better, um, that students don't like a lot of scrolling, um, having to like, you know, absorb a lot of information, like one form of multimedia per page is good and it can just be an image. Um, typically used the most are the ones like plagiarism and citations because of, you know, there might be required for a course or if there's an academic integrity violation, those are required. Um, but saying that um, people have given us positive feedback about the interactions, you know, how we engage them on the quick check part, um, as well as the certificate creation. So I think just being able to like you be the content creator and have a good set of learning objectives where you know kind of what is the goal of that, you know, module is the way to go. So I think it's good. And I think also a nice thing about it is that we the way our workflow works is that it runs through like four different librarians uh, before it gets published. So we can give you feedback, right? Of like, oh, this doesn't make sense to us, you know, if you're the expert on the topic, which is also helpful when students are helping us make these, which we've had. I think we even had an undergraduate student help us on one. So again, it's a very collaborative system um, as well. So we actually have an Anna, I can talk to you about this separately, but um, Joshua and I, and maybe Rachel, I think there was something maybe only two of us could present, but um, are going to the library assessment conference and we're presenting about assessment. Because one of the things we have coming forward is a diversity, equity, and inclusion audit so that we're going through all the modules and making sure that they um, meet a rubric based on diversity, equity, and inclusion and accessibility um, issues. Okay, so Faith and Joy, do y'all have any questions too? Well, let me know if you have any questions at this email and y'all will get a follow up to the recording. So lastly, before we say goodbye for this long weekend, thank you all for joining me before the long weekend. I think when I like made this date, I was like, yeah, Friday at lunch, that'll be fine. And I was like, oh, it's Friday before Labor Day. So um, thank you for coming. 
Um, here's a link again to the upcoming sessions. So our next session, I think, is actually done by Anna. Yes, I was right. So Anna is doing a session on September 12th at 1 p.m. on introduction to open research and publishing, open access, open science, and more. Um, so definitely check that out. And on that link, you have a description. And then at the top, there is a link to the sign up form to join. If y'all signed up for this and the other, like, you know, all of them, you will get um, a calendar invite like you did today, as well as a follow up email with the recording, which I will send to y'all um, and everyone who signed up for this today um, soon this afternoon, probably before the long weekend. But happy Friday, everyone, and have a great long weekend. Thank you, Joy. Thanks, Thanks Sam. Great to Damn. see you. Great job. Yeah, good to see you. Bye, Anna. Bye.